Israel's ground operation of Gaza has begun, but it's not yet the all-out assault many expected. So how are they doing it? Israel is trying to control what we see of their offensive. But by analyzing satellite images and the limited footage coming out of the Gaza Strip, our visual analysis reveals how Israel and Hamas are fighting this war right now and why this conflict is unlike anything we've seen before. Israel's PR war machine is in overdrive. The ground invasion will be televised by the IDF. Perhaps tempered by the US warning them against a full-blown charge into Gaza, this second stage so far appears to be an incremental advance into the northern half of the Strip. But what we know is limited because Israel has been careful with the information it releases. Israel is operating in a space of strategic ambiguity, which is exactly what they want to do to kind of keep Hamas on their back foot. Not knowing what to expect is something that um, makes Ham Hamas very unsure of how they, can, how they can enter the battle, but al also how they can enter into political dialogue. Following the Hamas attack of October 7th, Israel's war cabinet vowed to destroy Hamas. On October 13th, they told civilians in Gaza to evacuate from the top of the Erez crossing down to Wadi Gaza. Israeli tanks began to amass just north of the Gaza Strip in fields here, with others seen down near to Kibbutz Beri, the scene of one of Hamas's massacres. The IDF said short ground incursions began on October 22nd, but we didn't get images until days later. It was last Friday night that Israel imposed a communications blackout, internet, mobile and landlines all cut. An indication of more permanent incursions into Gaza. The IDF has continued to release footage from inside, showing its soldiers conducting operations. Columns of tanks driving along the sand, bulldozers clearing the way. But the Israelis do not say exactly where and when these images are from. They just release them day by day. But judging by where the tanks were before the incursions, and from satellite images, we know Israeli tanks entered Gaza from these three locations. And videos from social media show us where they were this week. One shows forces raising a flag at a hotel here, three kilometers from the border. The video appeared as early as Saturday, but we've not been able to verify when it was filmed. Another shows a tank firing on a civilian car on Salah al Din Road. The video appeared on Monday morning and was filmed by a Palestinian journalist. A satellite image taken on Monday at 9.34 a.m. shows smoke rising from the same location. And this image from Planet Labs, also from Monday morning, shows the tracks of Israeli tanks and armoured vehicles, locations where they appear to be bedding in, as well as reaching more built-up areas, all littered with craters. So what does this tell us about the Israeli strategy? I think what we see now seems to be some sort of pincher movement and encirclement. And I think if these two uh, thrusts meet somewhere along the coast, you have a full encirclement of Gaza City. That will then provide the IDF with a oper forward operating base from which they can launch attacks into, into Gaza City. And that's kind of what the IDF is preparing, what Israel is preparing the world for, is a long game of month and month, potentially they said even years, of kind of smoking Hamas out and laying siege on Gaza City, but with it also laying siege to those remaining civilians who are still there. That siege was seen in Israel's devastating strikes on the Jabalia refugee camp which caused dozens of deaths and injuries, according to Gaza's health ministry. The IDF said yesterday's attack killed several Hamas militants, including a senior military leader, hiding among the refugees and in tunnels underneath the camp. Hamas denies their leader was ever there. This shows the devastating consequences of this war for Palestinian civilians, as the Israelis push ahead and try to target Hamas infrastructure, in particular the network of tunnels. The Israeli mission is complicated not just because hostages are assumed to be underground, but that they have to know where the tunnels are. Footage from early this week showed Hamas emerging from one near the Erez crossing, seemingly unknown to the Israelis. Urban warfare is extremely complex because it's three-dimensional. In the way it's, it's, it's in the air, it's on the surface, it's in towers, but it's also subterranean. Hamas has also been able for 17 years to kind of dig in, fortifying an urban environment in a way that no other uh, actor has done over the last couple of decades. I can't think of any other urban combat environment where the defending party, which is Hamas in this respect, was able to dig deep tunnels, 70 meters deep, you know, hundreds of kilometers of tunnels, were able to, you know, create a c command and control centers that are completely uh, undiscoverable and impenetrable from the air. 
And none of this is helped on the Israeli side by reports that the political wing is divided under the unpopular Benjamin Netanyahu, with no idea what comes after Hamas, even if Hamas can be defeated. The only thing for certain is that there will be more deaths in Gaza, with civilians bearing the brunt, both during this war and after, in the rubble left behind.